National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators. Hey there, Gator Nation, we are back. Alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo here with you, and certainly there has been a ton of uncertainty from uh, what happened in the spring and the start of COVID-19 and all the sports getting shut down to the uncertainty of the summer and whether we were going to be back, but we are excited. It's another year of Gator Zone here in 2020 for the fall, and Megan, it's just uh, an awesome time to uh, to see a sports venue, see people walking around, of course, doing it safely, and we are going to do the same six feet apart throughout the show, and certainly we'll do that throughout the fall. Yeah, Jeff, I'm glad to see you even though it's six feet apart, <laughs> and we're glad to be here for fall sports. Again, 2020 is going to look very different. A lot of uncertainty around Gator sports, but we do know cross country, soccer, volleyball and football will hopefully play a fall sport. It will be condensed, but we'll have some Gator sports and hopefully bring a little joy to you guys as well. Well, and that made me smile. I'm sure it made Megan smile. And I know for uh, all you Gator fans, it made you smile as well, knowing things are back. But we need to continue to be safe, stay socially distanced, wear masks when asked of necessary, because we want to see this football team, this cross country team, this volleyball team, this soccer team, and uh, everybody get after it. And I know some of the teams have already been getting after it, haven't they? Yeah, even the spring sports are obviously working on a lot during the fall and the softball team which is why we're here at softball today has been working with the orthopedic sports medicine institute to kind of better themselves prevent injuries help with their mechanics and uh, here's a little look at what they've been up to year in and year out the florida gator softball program continually competes at the highest level this fall their partnership with uf health orthopedics and sports medicine institute is just the latest reason why so here what we do is we use ESPN style motion analysis setup where we place uh, basically markers all over the player's body. We have them move under the infrared cameras and we look at the batting motion. After we're done, there's a series of processing efforts that distill it down to create a computer model of each batter. The advantage of looking this closely at each player is that we can understand a player's performance relative to the motion. So this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. It was a completely new experience for me and I think it was really cool and I think it'll also be really cool to see how the results of it all come out. Kind of made a little partnership to come over here with the technology they have and uh, you know running the players with the sensors and you know just waiting to the information that we get back on the kinematic sequence and um, bat speed and, and just just the factors they're going to throw it together and give us information and just really looking forward on how we're going to use that information to make our players better. Athletics is an age where more information is available than ever. Depending on who you ask it might sound a little different but the common goal is how to use what is provided to become better. We put markers on the players, we track the position of the markers, we track them over time and space, and then use those information to calculate biomechanical measures and use for, for the coaches and the players. And then we also put the whole package together. And what I mean by that is that we offer everything from body composition to sports analyses to fitness testing and so on. So here, for the purpose of the softball assessments, we're really excited to be able to take a closer look at the mechanics of the batting motion. Uh, for swing, we pay a lot of attention to rotation, pay a lot of attention to timing, to separation from the kinematic chain. We can look about uh, the peak of the rotation. We look at when those things happen. In a nutshell, what you want is to create the maximum amount of force with the least amount of effort. You know, so how efficiently the body can work um, to 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 get to that point and. So this is going to help us establish, hey, is their sequence correct? Is it proper? Um, is it the way it's supposed to be compared to maybe a Major League Baseball hitter, pro softball player? Um, and then if it's not, that's fine because not everybody's going to have that. And then you work around that a little bit. The intersection of sport and science is exciting to all and at the University of Florida, a very unique advantage. This is uh, very exciting. To me, because it's for to me, it sounds like feels like a, it's a translating process, translating what's in the physics, math, biomechanics to what's in the practical world. 
to be able to help people, help players to improve their performance. What I'm personally doing is trying to figure out what's important for the coaches and the players and how do we translate that to the science. So I'm kind of a conduit between what's happening on the field and the science and I bring the two together to see how we can take the measures that we've gotten and get it the most useful information that can be used to improve performance on the field. For me as a coach, I want to get better every day too. I mean, my, you know, I want to help our players get better. Um, that's your job as a coach. And the better that I can be, the better I can help them. So um, getting new information, I mean, this is cutting edge. I mean, Definitely super lucky because we have all these resources to help us get better and compete as one of the top teams in the nation. So I think we're really lucky for all the resources that were provided. You know, these are unbelievable resources that we have here. And, and like I said, look forward to seeing how um, we can make our players better. Florida softball has been ahead of the curve for collegiate softball and using cutting edge science and resources like this is another way they hope to stay ahead. For Gator Zone, I'm Dylan Denmark. Great stuff there and uh, great stuff for what the University of Florida is doing for the student athletes. Gosh, I wish they would have done that for me 20 years ago. Maybe the, the shoulder wouldn't have been as messed up. I'd have been a millionaire in the big leagues, but I don't want that because then I wouldn't get to hang out with you every day. So it was a good trade off. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. We got to get to our first break here on Gator Zone. When we come back, we'll have much more for you guys. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Well, obviously, Jeff, with everything that's going on in the world, there is a lot of social injustice that's obviously affecting a lot of people's lives. And when our student athletes return to campus, they want to make sure their voices were also heard. Yeah, they certainly did. So Scotty Lewis, of course, on the men's basketball team, Dan Mullen, a bunch of football players and student athletes from all over the place here at the University of Florida decided a couple of weeks ago to march down University Avenue to continue the conversation. And here's more about what happened that day. No justice! 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 This is our time to step up to the plate and fight for the same foundation of those set before us. We must scream that we have a dream and make it a reality. And we must learn and educate as if our lives depend on it. Because they do. For me, it was honestly breathtaking because first off, I've never participated in a protest before. Um, but to see all of my teammates and all of my friends from other you know, programs and stuff like that all participate in that, it made me feel like you know, we're all fighting for the same thing. It was really special to be able to participate in an event like that because, first of all, I've never actually been able to do that before, and I've been actively like interacting with fellow student athletes and everything, but to be able to come together like that was something really special, I thought. The coolest part about that was just being with the student athletes that I go to school with and I compete with every day, and just seeing that we all could stand together for the same cause and march together to make a difference. It was very special um, because I think, you know, in our teams, we're used to bonding, you know, within our sport. But anytime uh, you get to really bond with other student athletes, um, something that's greater than basketball means a lot to me. Uh, it's very big and powerful. It was really cool. It felt really good, too, because I didn't know how many people were going to actually be there. I didn't know that pretty much my whole team was going to be there either. So it felt really, like, heartwarming to see all those people come out of every different race that we have to support and stand up for what's right. And when you look out to when you look, go to protests and you look out to the crowd, you see a very diverse group of people all fighting for one for one thing. And I, I guess in retrospect, it's bigger than African Americans. You know, it, it's it's involving the LGBTQ community. It's involving Black people, White people, people of color all over the world. As people, it is our moral obligation to stand up for what we believe in and stick to it. All we want is peace, love, and positivity. If we spread that message, we can accomplish anything. I think this is the first time to where um, a multitude of athletes are focusing on one thing and being extremely loud about it. So um, I think we're in a, a great time um, uh, as far as social media and people being able to use and express themselves on their platforms. 
um, and how social media is such a, a great tool in order to do so. We're more than athletes. Um, this is something that's greater than basketball. Uh, this is about humanity. Um, so anytime you really get to have that opportunity, uh, it's really special. I think we uh, really inspired a lot of people that day. Just knowing that um, us athletes, because a lot of us do have a big following on social media and just using our voices to like inspiring and like educating the younger fans and everything. I just like really appreciate like having a platform and be able to do that as an athlete. It's amazing. I think it's so great that all these athletes can use their platform to do good and I'm one of those athletes and I feel blessed to be able to do that from where I stand and I think it's amazing and we're going to make great changes. It's just a different change because we are more than players and we do understand what's going on in the world and we do have a say. That's been very nice. I think it's the most important thing that we have right now is using our platform to speak out for what matters. And if we don't do that, then we're kind of wasting the opportunity that we have. So I think it's the biggest thing right now is just using our voice to make a difference and see change that we want to see. If we can put up a fight and we can express those things and we can learn from each other and guide each other in a, in a better direction, um, I think that's, kinda, I, that's our best bet. We're asking that once we get pulled over, our lives are not going to be taken. And speaking on behalf of all the athletes, we're people before we're players. I was born black before I knew I could dunk a basketball. And that matters more than anything. We appreciate you guys for coming out, representing us. And as long as the fight's going on here in Gainesville, we'll all be here for you guys. Thank you. Well, as you saw, the Florida volleyball team also took place in that march and took a lot of pride coming together as a team and uniting. And another thing that that team takes pride is that middle blocker group, that position group, all three ladies are from the state of Texas. Let's see how they've gelled so far this year. DeSoto, Carrollton, and Plano, all three of nearby Dallas, Texas, where this year's middle blocker group calls home. We're all from Dallas, but we're all from like different parts. So like I'm from like more like northern area. Nadie's like kind of in the middle, and then Dee's from like da like South Dallas. But I don't know. I think it's just fun because we have, are from like different, the same city, but like different areas. So like we all have like something different to talk about and like share. The freshman, junior, and redshirt senior all bring their own style, personality, and encouragement to the team. The main leadership role comes from the hype queen herself, Darielle King. I think on the team I would be considered a leader, but more of like the person who everyone turns to for like energy and they need, you know, to get out of their little funk or they're getting frustrated or whatever. And I think that I would probably play that role on the team. Embracing that role for King has helped her position group grow and their respect for her shows. She's a very good leader. She cares about everyone and she wants to know like how you're feeling and wants your input. Like she isn't just like do what she wants. It's kind of like asking for feedback, but still stern and wants everyone to do well. She's like, she's like a hype man, kind of. Like she's like, okay, go girl, okay, yeah. Like that's the type of, that's the type of thing that Daryl does. Lauren Dooley, now in her third year, has grown in how she leads too. The more reserved middle's leadership style is helping her freshman teammate. Dooley's like, she tells me what I'm doing right and it's like, it like brings me up a lot. So I like really appreciate that a lot. As a unique year continues, King wants to make sure her fellow Texans remember one simple phrase. Trust the process. It takes, like, I'm, when I first got here, I was so result driven and I always thought that if, you know, if I wasn't hitting the ball a certain way, if I wasn't hitting it hard enough, that that was what, you know, that was what could take, could take me down. But I think with them too, I've always taught them to trust the process because that's what I had to learn. Now, as the middle settle into a fall season that no one has experienced before, during a movement that has changed so many, they have found a new space to work together. I just think that the fact that we're women and we're black in, in these times, it's just more like empowering for us. And we just have like a special bond that like, like you can't like, you can't stop us. Like we, we're owning it and we're embracing it. And it's just really fun. It is so fun because now y'all get to see that I'm just like, it's a Texas thing. Like the slang, the, like the walk, just everything about Texas women is just amazing. And the fact that we're all African-American, that speaks volumes. Like I was asking um, 
marry if she's ever had that happen before and we're the first so it's super fun I like to say lit because it is very lit but um, for the most part I enjoy it we embrace each other and we really 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 pride ourselves being from Dallas and being African-American women well, for me, when I chose Florida, I was looking for a diverse school, and Florida was exactly that. And this, like my position being all, all of us being black middles and from the same place, like that's just, it, it just makes me feel comfortable. Like it's, it's not like if I was with a different like race, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be comfortable. It's like just more comfortable. Like they understand what the struggles of being just a black person in America. So yeah. This group of ladies have made a special bond that will last and get them through. I really love it. I, I always talk about it to everyone and like my family and just it's so fun to have a group to go to like when times are getting rough in practice or like during quarantine with FaceTime. Just someone that it's kind of like home but here. Home away from home. Triple P. Dallas Bingo. <laughs> I like Dallas. That was cute. All right, Megan, thank you very much. See how talented she is? She's hosting, she's doing stories all that stuff. So a lot going on in her life and a lot going on here on the southwest corner of campus. Of course, we're at softball. Got a new baseball stadium that we'll show you later on in uh, our shows here on Gator Zone. Of course, you got where soccer practices and that's right over there. So let's head over there right now. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud partner of the Florida Gators and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everyone, and welcome back into Gators. I'm Jeff and I hanging out at Donald R. Disney Lacrosse Stadium, but which is where soccer plays their matches now. And this 2020 fall season, like we said, is going to be a little tricky. So for soccer, you're going to have a condensed season. There'll be eight SEC matches, a little bit of SEC tournament play, but all that NCAA madness, that'll happen in the spring. Crazy. So it is uh, new for everybody, but that's okay for Becky Burley because she has a lot of new student athletes coming to the soccer team. And the way that they're preparing, the COVID Cup, it builds camaraderie, have a little friendly competition between all of them and gets them ready for this condensed season. So let's see how Becky and the rest of the crew have been uh, getting after it. The coronavirus pandemic has caused a lot of uncertainty for fall sports this season. Many have had their seasons pushed back. One of the sports that was heavily affected was soccer. We caught up with head coach Becky Burley to talk about the impact the virus has on the team. Summer was difficult. Summer was, I felt very, um, felt like we were very isolated. Like even I felt isolated from the players ourselves. And then I think the players felt like the older players had to train with the older players because that's who they lived with and that was the group they were allowed to and the same for the younger players. So it wasn't really until we started preseason that those two groups got to mix and mingle. And so um, I'm actually really glad that we had this longer preseason because we really needed it to, to get to know each other a little bit more. COVID-19 extended the preseason into mid-September, and Coach Burley took full advantage and used his time to build her team's trust. I've loved the extra time. I mean, I think it's been one of the most amazing experiences as a coach because you just get so much more time to be able to develop your team and to see people sort of express themselves differently as the time goes on. And I think for us, in the way we play, where it's so dependent upon trusting one another and knowing one another, it's a huge benefit. With many new faces wearing the orange and blue this season, the veterans have helped the rookies adapt to this new way of life during the pandemic. I think they've done a really good job, and honestly, I have to credit the older players for helping that happen. I think they've been very welcoming in a very difficult situation where even just socializing with people has been a challenge. Um, so once we did get a chance to start practicing, I felt like they did a really good job of integrating the new players. To help prepare the team for the upcoming season, they held their very own tournament, the COVID Cup. The girls were split into an orange and white team where they competed in five scrimmages. Yeah, the COVID Cup's been a lot of fun because um, we basically took fantasy football and turned it into fantasy soccer. And um, Chris Cafaro and Sarah Loudon kind of had the idea together and looked at what the EPL does for fantasy football in, in the UK and we took a lot of it from there. And I think it's, it's just added a whole nother layer of competitiveness to the games. And it's been really fun. I think the players have really gotten into it. And this is the first game uh, where we've mixed the teams, but um, the competitiveness of the two teams prior to us mixing them this time was so high. And I think that's what made it really fun too, because it was a, a pretty slim margin between the two teams. 
Although this season is unlike any other they've seen before, Coach Burley and her team are grateful for their chance to play games, despite the difficult and uncertain situation the world is in. I think it's definitely not exactly what we're used to, but I think at this point, um, we were prepared for the worst, which would be basically having no season. So I think the fact that we get to play some games and we get to have the uh, SEC tournament and there's a trophy at the end makes a huge difference. I think the uncertainty was difficult at the beginning, um, especially when the uncertainty was, will we have a season or not? But I think once we knew we were having a season, I think that became uh, a whole different, it was a game changer at that point, and I feel like since then, it's been pretty easy. The team's excited to play and compete this season, even though it may look a little different, as it's an all-SEC schedule. For Gator Zone, I'm Maddie Camparisi. We're excited for some Gator sports that are live that we can actually watch. That we are, and then of course the next week, September 26th, in Oxford, Mississippi. That football team kicks off their SEC season, and uh, we'll see what Dan Mullen feels about the boys when we get back. What I'm excited about is we keep taking steps forward. Um, I'm seeing little improvement. I'm seeing improvement from guys that we need to create depth to get through this season. Obviously, this is gonna be a unique season, not just with dealing with injuries as they come along like a normal season, uh, but you're also gonna have to deal with potentially guys missing games for quarantine or other reasons. Uh, so, you know, what I'm really pleased with is uh, that we continue to take steps forward in creating depth across the board. You know, and the next guy up mentality that, you know, everything we try to do in practice and scrimmage is roll. Everybody, you know, if you guys have watched our practices before. It's not like, hey, the ones get all the reps and then twos get a couple reps and threes get no reps. Everybody gets a lot of reps. All right, so there is a look of what Florida football hopes to uh, look like throughout the year, and this is what it is going to look like when we are uh, in the stands inside the swamp. Of course, socially distancing, have about 17,000 fans inside the swamp, and if everybody does their part, we'll uh, be loud, we'll be rowdy, and we'll be having a good time, just like we did getting back here on Gator Zone. Exactly, Jeff, and I think it's been a little while. I'm a little rusty, but, rusty, but you know the drill. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat are all the ways you can follow your Florida Gators all season long, even through a condensed, weird COVID 2020 season. Yeah, so make sure you do it. And again, uh, we'll be here throughout the fall and hopefully uh, many more things as we continue to get sports back, which is really, really good. For Nicole doing all the, uh, the great work and the real work, man in the camera, she's my partner. Megan Parler. I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you next time.